One of the problems most people have when they come to a body water like Lac Sewell is like, where do you start? The excitement of going to a lake like this is exploring. And it's just fun going into these back bays and not knowing, right? Oh, Trying to figure it out. You could catch these all day, you'd be one happy customer at the lodge, wouldn't you? There's nothing wrong with that northern right there. <laughs> hey? Oh! <laughs> oh, 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 oh get him out of that! Yeah! <laughs> The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Garmin, join the club. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Today's Fish in Canada episode is one that's been long overdue. Not because of the fish species, not because of the lake location, not any of the particulars. It's overdue because of the type of trip it is. We often get caught up in the gotta get a show done quickly and move on to the next one mode. In this one, not so much. This trip, it was the exact opposite. And Steve and I are headed to Lac Sewell, one of Ontario's premier fishing lakes in northwestern Ontario. Ange and I fished here twice in the past, one away back in 2004 and again in 2008. The first trip was at the northwest end of the lake and let me just say the fishing was phenomenal. Once we found them, it was big walleye after oh, yeah. big walleye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Black Sewell, yeah. walleye capital on the planet, duh. Yeah, yeah, don't adjust your set, that's really me, before I started dyeing my hair white. The second trip was to the extremely popular Anderson's Lodge. On this shoot, we fished areas in the south side of Lac Sewell for an awesome piece about sand-relating walleye. We also made our way into a remote musky and smallmouth bass lake that produced some outstanding fishing. Fast forward to today, and we are destined to fish yet another portion of the massive water body called Lac Sewell. For this trip, it's all about the adventure. More like the reality, to be honest. After our initial greetings with the Anderson's Lodge staff, we were taken to our entry point at Lac Sewell, the boat launch at Deception. This is a main launching area near Sioux Lookout that connects to Lac Sewell. This is where our adventure begins. Tom's Landing is our final destination. It's normally used by Anderson's as a fly-in outpost camp since it's an extremely long way via water. Knowing that we had the big Princecraft and Merc combo to get us there, we decided to make the long trek by boat. It's an option that the lodge offers, and we took it. We'd like to think that this boat ride on Lac Sewell to a remote fishing camp is a one-of-a-kind experience, but the reality is, a boat ride on any lake or river in northwestern Ontario is awe-inspiring. The scenery is outstanding, you never know what you'll see as far as wildlife, and you look at every bay or inlet or piece of shoreline as, there's gotta be a fish there, there and there. It's what we all live for. After our arrival at Tom's Landing, we quickly set up a game plan. Steve and I are gonna try the elusive North End Sewell smallmouth, while Pete's gonna head to an area that has pike and walleye that the lodge told us about. It's gonna be a long boat ride for him on one of the camp boats, but it might well be worth it. We didn't realize there was smallmouth up here too. I think the boys are going on a smallmouth mission too, so we were told you get to the north section, sometimes it's a little tougher, if you're less fish, but I think if the boys find them, they're going to be into a, a heyday, mayhem. There's the beast going. <laughs> and saw a couple more boats, so he figured, I'm going to race these dudes. What I want to find today is I want to look for a newly emergent cabbage weed. Cabbage weed will hold walleye, muskie, and pike. So I'm going to run the Garmin throughout these areas. And if I just start seeing strands of one, two, three, four, five, six feet of, of weed, that's where I'm gonna start fishing. So we're gonna need the net. Oh, he's on that last hook. Don't worry, oh, you, can do, you, can, do you yeah. can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Whenever I'm fishing on new water, I'm always on the lookout toward the shoreline or to my fish finder, seeking anything different to stop and cast to. Sometimes things stick out like a sore thumb, sometimes they're very subtle. On this particular ride, I spotted a tiny rock point. I had to try it. Oh, big pike, sitting right there. Okay, okay. Uh, 
That was a nice pike. I'm pretty sure it was a pike. Come on, clunk that thing. That was a minimum 12, 14 pound pike sitting right on the sand bottom. Come on, big mama. I need you. That one? Yep. Sounds good. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the one. The old dead sticking. The old dead stick. Does it again. Nice. There we go. Oh. A little smally right where he should have been. That's a beauty. <laughs> nice color. <laughs> the slow dead stick presentation the old does slow it dead again. Stick. Man, them Yamamoto's are good for that. The Senko, the old Yamamoto Senko. I mean, it's been replicated, duplicated, imitated by everybody. Everything. But there is something about the original that it's just crazy. It just works. Using a soft stick worm, or as they're more commonly known, a Senko, leaves an angler a lot of rigging options. Some of the most common methods are bare wacky rigging, O-ring wacky rigging, Texas rigging and or Texpose rigging, with or without weight. Any and all of these setups will most definitely work on not only Laxul smallies, but pretty much any smallmouth in the country. Oh, that's a better fish. Nice. Nice. There he is. Oh, nice. look at him in the sun. Oh, what a gorgeous fish. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, he's thick. He's there thick, that buddy. boy. Nice. Yeah. Beauty. Oh, yeah, I'm happy about that. No he's, look, he's a lot bigger now that I uh, pulled him in the boat. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, baby. All on a, on a, this, this huge, massive structure of boulders and crevices and caves and rock. Oh, that's, I that's what I love about smallmouth fishing. I would say probably less than half of it is visible. The rest of it is all underwater. It's for There's a sure. hundred smallmouth fish. Easily. And okay. when I pulled that one up, Another one. Yeah, it was, there was the follower yeah. with him. Go get him, buddy. Okay, thanks, brother. Good one. Good one? Yeah. Right that on the edge, a, eh? Yes. They followed you up. Let's see if I can get a follower. Absolutely, yeah, bud, because this you? is a much better fish. I see No it, follower? Though. Oh, he's thick. No, no follower. No follower. But we're going to need the net. Oh, yes, sir. he's I will on get that you last the net. hook. Don't worry. Oh, buddy. Worry. Oh. We we can can do do this. Get him in the net. Yeah. We can do this. Nice. <laughs> now that's a smallmouth right there, bud. Nice work. Woo. Ange picked out this bait out of his box, and it has been on fire. I'm giving you the privilege and honor to use it. <sighs> it's Remember the last that. one, too. Don't and lose I, it. And I totally appreciate that We privilege. don't even know what it is. That's the no. new part about it. I'll we tell don't you, even know what it is. I'll tell you what it is, buddy. What? It's on fire. It's good. <laughs> it's on fire. <laughs> oh, that's a small right there. Look at that slap. There you go. Beautiful. Look at that. She's got that bend in it, and it's a dead minnow. You walk the dog, you slow uh, uh, twitches, and it just goes side to side and up and down. And, it's just you perfect. Know, it is. Like, yeah. I mean, it's versatile because you can work it in the shallow. You can let it sink a little bit. It is awesome. I only have one. I think I might just put that in my tackle box. I'm going to be checking your pockets when you <laughs> leave here. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I can never tell. He came up to the surface, but I'm hoping, but I'm doubting. Oh, maybe not bad, folks. Maybe not bad. Not the big one. I'm going to guess the big fish in this area was double the size. Honestly, not bad, not a bad bike. Oh, fell right out, fell right out of his yapper. Solid fish, you know, a decent bike. Not, not, that's a lot of fun, you know, if a family comes up here to Lac Sewell, find a bay like this where I found a weed bed that's loaded with fish, a tiny weed bed the size of this boat, and it's loaded with fish. Out here in a little be 16 foot aluminum boat, by myself, the boys are in the big rig. And I'm just experimenting, and, and this is fun. In a lake like Lac Sewell, you catch your shoreline in five minutes. It's like, wow, you know, I mean, this is awesome. What are you thinking? Nice, Walter. 
I tell you, I, I've fished this lake though. We fished it in fall. Ange and I one time fished it in the fall. And it was absolutely <laughs> sweet. <laughs> that's better. And so that, you know, that's probably an average fish around here, I would say. That'll be a, a throwback above the slot, which is fine. Jig and minnow, just them. See, he's crooked there now because this fish knocked it over, but that's just a, a staple up here. You want to catch walleye all day long, you throw a jig and you throw a minnow. That's a nice fish. You could catch these all day, you'd be one happy customer at the lodge, wouldn't you? It's the stupidest looking little spot here. It's a little wee gr grass point off the shore, and uh, they're just sitting on that point for something. Not, not even a point, like it's. It's pointless, is what it is. It's such a nondescript point. I wouldn't have fished it other than I wanted to fish that tree right there for pike. And I saw these walleye on the bottom. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna fish walleye, pike, bass, muskie, whatever it takes. Just here for fun. Eat it. But this shows you how quickly you could pick up a shore lunch in a place like this, right? A lake like Lac Sewell, you catch your shore lunch in five minutes. Like, wow, you know, I mean, this is, Awesome. Get your stuff here, get your fish here, go back to the camp and, uh, and cook them up. Although we don't have to, because we got them right at our dock. Get your stick, kid. I'm cleaning. You're cleaning? You guys can catch them faster than I can clean them. There you go, set the hook, Thank you. Point. Bring me the bucket, I'm stuffed. Get over here, it's not even fair. I don't know, I just finished tying my hook on and Ange is already taking the first one off. <laughs> Peter, I got another one for you. <laughs> right off the dock, right here on Lac Sewell, we're catching our dinner. Here you go, bud. When they said, come fish off the end of the dock, I come down here and I was throwing it out and trying to be fancy and Ange walked down and all he did was drop it right off the end of the dock and <laughs> Hello. Bingo. In fact, the one of the uh, lodge managers here at Anderson said that his biggest pike came from this dock. Yeah, that's right. Yes, buddy. Yes. Peter! I defy you to find a better meat and to find any bones in my wallet. What a perfect way to end the fishing day, eating fresh caught and cooked walleye with your fishing buddies. It doesn't get any better than this. Oh, whoa. Done. Nice work. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> To get to today's outstanding fishing, we first drove north on Highway 400 to Highway 69. We then took Highway 17 northwest until we reached the town of Dryden. We then turned north on Highway 72 until we reached our first destination at Anderson's Lodge. But that was only part of the adventure. Under normal conditions, Anderson's flies groups to where we stayed at Tom's Landing. However, since we wanted the big Prince Craft there, we decided to traverse the mighty Lac Sewell taking in all its gorgeous scenery. We rate Anderson's as one of the top lodges in all of Ontario. With great accommodations, meals, and access to world-class fishing, it gets no better. The bay is sort of, there's a kind of almost like a double point, right? A big bay. Yeah. Not a big bay, small bay. Pike sitting right here. That's the big pike I saw. He was sitting right in the sand. And he just cruised out that way. I knew there was some really nice pike in the area I found yesterday. Broke my string. The first fish that I saw in this bay, just up ahead, minimum double that. Probably probably double and a bit, double and a half. But it was way too far north for my little tinner and teller. You know what I mean? It takes me an hour to get there. The boys, however, they'd be there in 10 to 15 minutes with the Prince Craft. With a simple map session and then a transfer of my GPS waypoints, I'm sure that two sticks like these guys will head north and have some fun. Well, this looks pretty much like Pete drew it up. Lots of sand and that great big boulder sticking out from shore. This has got to be it. For these pike, I'm using what's referred to as a glide bait with incredible action. He was right on the rocks, dude. Didn't he see that? Yeah. 
he had to walk into the water to get that bait. <laughs> Unfortunately, Stevie, <laughs> this one you can't use. So, it's a bait I bought about three, four years ago in, uh, in England. I was at a show there. This is made by a company called Salmo. And this thing is just nuts. These two little fins on the back allow it to basically, it's basically an underwater spook. You know, you can walk the dog, but not on the surface. You can let it go down. It, it does sink, so you can bring it down to whatever level you want and then just start walking the dog back and forth and it just goes through the water column like that. It's fantastic. I think I'm on to something. Whoa. <laughs> he come right out of the water. Oh, he ate it. Oh, he ate it. No. no. Angelo. Here he is right here. Where'd my, where'd my bait go? He's got it in his mouth. You know, if I had a really good partner right now on the boat, like my buddy Petey, for example, he'd already been in the water diving for it. But. Sorry, Stevie. I did have another one. And no, you can't use this one either. Oh, whoa. There was one. Atta boy. Does it feel good? Well, it was a big swirl. I, I heard the swirl. He's coming too easy. That's okay. No, oh, no, that's no, a bigger that's fish. A better, oh, it is a better, a better fish. fish. I think we better grab the net. Yeah, I believe this is net worthy. Yes, it is. We're on your side here, buddy. He's coming right through there. That's an awesome bait. That's a great, oh, yeah. Oh, he's nice got it all in. fish. <laughs> I love it. John, nice work. Nice work. Oh, 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 did you see that? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> he would have counted anyway. Right? Yeah, but the folks at home want to see this one. <laughs> that was cool. As soon as he got him to death, poof, out he went. We, and we both said he's well hooked because we couldn't see the bait. No. Right? The lure was embedded right in him. I got the net. All right, you got the net? Yep. I'm good. Oh boy. Let me get this hook yep. out of here and then you can pull this fish out. Oh, I'll let you do it. You're down there already. Oh. I'm getting used to you doing stuff for me. Just cruising out here. I'll bet you this bay is loaded with them, Steve. Has to be. I mean, look at the size of it, too. Like, I mean, there's nothing wow. wrong with that northern right there. <laughs> hey, there is nothing wrong with that northern right there. There's a Not lot of... Not bad at all. That's a lot of fun. And catching them with that bait, right? It's, it's as good as top water. Oh, I think it's better because you can just get underneath the surface with oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's Let's fantastic. put this barrel back home. Now, this is a big body of water. I mean, one of the problems most people have when they come to a body of water like Lac Sewell is like, where do you start? The excitement of going to a lake like this is exploring like Steve and I are doing. Neither one of us have ever been in this part of the lake. I've been on the lake twice before, but nowhere near here. And it's just fun going into these back bays and not knowing, right? Oh, Trying but, to figure it out. And you know, this <laughs> pattern started with Peter doing just that. Yeah, he was exploring. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and boom. And we build on that and you put another piece in the puzzle yeah, and all of yeah. a sudden you end up in a, a mecca so, for big pike. What is the pattern? What we've found is that the fish are relating to sand. That's key. Big pike sitting right there. Minimum 12, 14 pound pike sitting right on the sand bottom. And newly emerging cabbage weed, which is critical, obviously. So wherever we've been able to find little pieces of sand, hard to do on a lake like this, because as you can see by looking around, this is mostly rock. But when you find a little piece of sand, like we've got right here, and you see some, some grass growing on it, chances are good that sand comes all the way down underneath the body of, uh, of this bay here, and it is. And we, I think we found the mother load. Black Sewell, Ontario. Oh, 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 get him out of that, get him out of that. It never disappoints. As we stated at the head of the show, this trip was all about the adventure, the camaraderie, and the great fun. The fish, well, that was simply icing on the cake. Today's hotspot is a weed bed in a back bay that Steve and I discovered while on our trip to Lac Sewell. The waypoint on your screen will get you right there. This is one of the largest cabbage beds we found during our trip, and it most definitely held the biggest concentration of northern pike in that vicinity. We used a variety of baits, but a glide bait seemed to really trigger these pike into hitting. When hitting weed beds like this one, 
Take a systematic approach by slowly working the entire bed from deep to shallow. For more hot spots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Garmin, join the club. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Closed captioning for this episode was brought to you by FishingCanada.com the gateway to your next fishing adventure.